We walk into like the main dance floor area and there's kind of like these big pedestals just oh, like- Oh god, I crushed my vagina on one of those ones. Huh? So I essentially scissored the corner of the box. I feel like I lost my virginity for the second time that day. I still have a Playboy magazine in my chest. Why? Like an actual Playboy? An actual chest? An actual... Who has a chest? Because like, what I are ran you, a out fucking of pirate? I ran out of shelves. Where else was I supposed to put my booty? Gina, do you like my candle that I set up? Yeah, why do we have a candle? We never have a candle lit in here. Um, well, one, I wanted to set the mood. And then two, I've been having the craziest farts of my life. Oh, God. And before you came over, when producer Ian was just setting up, the poor man got gassed. It was bad. Um, so. I'm filing a complaint. Huh? As, as soon as we get an HR, I'm filing a complaint. You are HR as well. I'm filing a complaint with myself. Okay, go ahead and do that. Um, but yeah, so now it's the smell of... What is this the smell of? Let me use my foot. Oh, I'm going to knock it over. Yuzu white pineapple. Yeah, it's yuzu white pineapple instead of yakisoba and cabbage and sulfurous eggs. Isn't that a nicer smell? I'm surrounded by shit and farts everywhere. Like that. <laughs> That's not very nice to say about producer Ian. We wanted you to feel at home, Gina. <laughs> You just called him a fart. I did not call him a fart. He was, he Bitch, you think you the shit? You ain't even a fart. I spice is an industry plant. Can we all agree upon this? Obviously. obviously. Like, I first of all, I don't think she's that talented. She had that one song on TikTok that goes da 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 da. I got a ba da 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 ba da da. I don't really know. I'm fine with being called old for this take, like fine, whatever. But you're going to tell me that Ice Spice, like we've seen her perform on stage. Oh. She doesn't have stage presence. Oh. She's not that interesting. She got weird Ronald McDonald looking ass hair. And then like, yes, yeah, she thick. But at this point, there's a lot of women who are thick in the entertainment business. I'm a Megan Stallion fan till I die. Oh my God. I, I may will not, die for her. Yeah. I may not know all her music, but just the things that I've seen about her, I'm like, you are fucking cool. And then seeing her at TwitchCon dancing with Master Chief mm -hmm. on stage and seeing all her cosplays. She, like a few weeks ago, she was in Japan and she's been yep. posting about it. She's having the best time of her life. Like that's, that's a good weeb. I like her. I feel like she would be the nicest person. However, have you been seeing, <laughs> have you been seeing all the Jennifer Lopez slander? Oh my God. Yeah. I, so I don't really know much about Jennifer Lopez uh, outside of the South Park. Taco, taco, yeah. prito, because that's just like one of the favorite songs that I've ever had. Listen, you listen to it as a kid once growing up and then mm -hmm. it's just stuck with you forever. Yeah. Uh, it's Jennifer Lopez. Jenny from the block. You know, you know the block that she always talks about all the time. The block. Jenny. Jenny from the block. It's Jenny from the block. The block that's always there and she talks about it forever. And like that's her only personality because she's Jenny from the block. How many blocks are there? What fucking block? Anyway, so she's always constantly talking about, you know, I'm Jenny from the block. And then there's now she came out with a movie and a documentary. Um, and then there's a clip of her that Amazon Prime posted of her sitting in her gym, ruffling up her hair. She's like, you know, when I have my hair like this, it reminds me of, you know, me as a little kid just running up and down the block and just this crazy kid in the Bronx and blah, blah, blah. And people are like, shut the fuck up about the block already. At this point, you owe the block residuals, <laughs> you know? And then like years ago, she did like she did. She went to her block and she went up to an old man that lives there in his house sitting outside. And she's like, remember me, Jennifer? He's like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> and then now there's like multiple people that have come out who have like dealt with her in the past as yeah. you know waitresses or people who worked in movie theaters that she demanded to shut down or people who've done hair and makeup for her mm -hmm. apparently she's a fucking horrible person like she's one of those weirdo fuck ass celebrities who are like don't look me in the eye or she'll call you know regular people like it's and stuff she's getting so much sh shit right now we, we've seen the photos of ben affleck oh my god yeah we, that poor that's man. a broken man yeah yeah and this is like Ben Affleck, the award-winning everything. Director. Director. He, he does writer. have an Academy Award, yes. Yeah. And then like clips of her movie or documentary came out. She's dancing in the rain with an umbrella. And, and it, like, it looks like she's limping with it. Yeah. Like, it doesn't even look like a choreographed dance. She's like limping yeah. with this umbrella with a hummingbird flying around. I don't know. I've never been a Jennifer Lopez fan, mainly Neither. because I've never heard of her outside of South Park making fun of her. <laughs> but like I've heard that she's she can't sing. She obviously can't dance. So I don't really know what she's good for. Uh, I would yeah. say she used to be a very good dancer. No, oh, she mm. used to be? She was a fly girl on In Living Color back in the day. Mm. What's Living Color? In Living Color. 
Is that Fire Marshal Bill? Homie, don't play that. Homie the clown. All right, never mind. What does he say? Never mind. Is, are these words? I don't know. It's like it's. It, like it was a sketch comedy show. I like Mad TV. I like Miss Swan. Do you feel accurately represented by Miss Swan? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You look like a man. People are fucking offended by that now. Oh fuck you, Miss Swan was fantastic. She was hilarious. Uh, hello. Hello. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. No. No. He. He looking like a man. Yeah, it's so fucking good. Or when she awesome. She was going through the airport and she, they're checking her luggage. She pulls it out and her dog pops up. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Times are different now. But you know, the woman who plays Miss Swan also does Lois on Family Guy, right? Oh really? Yeah, I it's the same that. woman, That's and then she's Alex also in that in the Maisel show, Miss Ma- Miss Maisel, and oh. a-, a bunch of other things. She's great. Oh, I didn't know that. I love that bit. Like everyone loved it back then, but now everyone's just mad. That one, and then there were there was a uh, Bunifa Latifa Harifa oh Sharifa my God. Jackson. And then there was I Bon Quee Quee. I have so long. Right? I, so I remember just watching all of it. these skits on YouTube while I was supposed to be doing my homework. I never got my homework finished. But I loved Bunifa Latifa Harifa Sharifa Jackson. Bunifa. Oh she my God. She was amazing. And then there was also Stuart. I'm like, no. Oh Stuart, you God. have to Stuart? behave, Stuart. Stuart. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, Stuart. <laughs> It was like <laughs> I love her so much. It's when it's when TV was the worst, but also the best. Yeah, I feel like it. W- Stewart, we're just at a point where it's like this is this is clearly a joke. No one's making fun of children for being fucking children. Yeah, and then now people are mad about the whole Angela Johnson nail salon thing. I'm like, oh, shut the fuck that up! That united us, united us Vietnamese people together. Okay, are you fucking kidding me? It was hilarious. And then people are mad at Joe Coy for making fun of his mom's accent. Like, fuck you. Filipino people no, love that shit. No, Joe Coy does deserve to take the L. Now. Now he deserves yeah, to take the L. Yeah, but his comedy back then was awesome. But now, him now, it's like, mm. But the bit back then was pretty fun. Was he funny? Was he, he was. ever funny? He was. Okay. He was. Like, uh, growing up in the Bay Area with all Filipino people, they fucking loved him. Oh. Yeah. Did you see the, uh, did you see Amanda Bynes come out on TikTok? Oh my god. I haven't seen the documentary, but I hear it's fucking crazy and Oh, the Nickelodeon Quiet on set. Yeah. yeah it's been making its rounds on uh TikTok. So for those of you who aren't aware, listen, if you grew up if you were a kid in like the nineties or maybe even the eighties, you knew what Nickelodeon all that was, the Amanda Bynes show, uh I think there was even the movie She's All That. What I like about you, all of these different shows that there were kid stars, Amanda Bynes, Drake Bell, Josh Peck, uh, iCarly, uh, Victorious, Miranda all of Cosgrove. these shows. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Jeanette McCurdy, mm-hmm. who wrote one of her, or wrote her memoir where she talks a little bit about this. And if anything, like I'm going to give her credit as the first domino to yeah. knock over all the others in order to get this to happen. So fucking props to you, Jeanette McCurdy. Um, but essentially, uh, Quiet on Set is a documentary about all of the abuse that people on the Nickelodeon kid show set faced. Amanda Bynes hasn't said anything publicly, but our poor girl is not looking healthy. No, 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 no. She uh, does not look mentally well, but also people have found an old Twitter account that was hers. It was a ghost Twitter account, but she had on that Twitter a picture of her ID so people know that it's her and basically was just... You know, apparently Dan Schneider got her pregnant when she was a kid and forced her to get an abortion and all that shit. Like, just terrible, terrible things. Her parents stole money from her, millions and millions of dollars, and pretty much left her high and dry. And she's just not in a good mental state now. And Are we sure about the Dan Schneider getting her pregnant thing? She, uh, I mean, it's... Because that's, I mean, that's a serious uh, allegation. That's a, that's a crime right that, there. Yeah. That's, that's a serious allegation. Allegedly, allegedly, yeah. Uh, people are, you know, it was... I don't know where the source came from, but allegedly he did get her pregnant. And one of her uh, messages that she wrote, she capitalized all the letters to spell uh, the, the letters to spell out Dan did it. Like just crazy shit. I need to watch a documentary. But basically, Dan Schneider was what the CEO of Nickelodeon. I don't think he was the CEO. He was just like the executive producer on, on a lot of these shows. Yeah. So a lot of power, and he had a massive fucking foot, foot fetish. fetish. Yeah. That's why the Nickelodeon logo was a f- giant foot and. Now people are looking back at all the old episodes of all these shows and all the weird shit. Like there's all this feet sh- stuff everywhere. Like 
foot yeah. shots and oh i pranked him because i put whipped cream on his foot like lots of feet stuff mm-hmm. you know behind the scenes um footage where like every time he got close to one of the child actors they would back away and they're really scared and they protect yeah. each other i mean ariana grande was one of them too mm-hmm and uh basically it's just him and josh peck's dad were fucking monsters uh, with really creepy fetishes and taking advantage of these little kids and that's why a lot of them grow up to be really fucked in the head mm-hmm. i mean it's hard being a child actor in mm-hmm. the first place one where you know you are at the age of like 12 13 and you're super famous and millions of people know you and then you age out say five years later you don't do any more acting roles and people forget about you like yeah. that that's gotta play a part on your self-esteem confidence and just like the way that you perceive life as a whole oh the day that that. people don't know me anymore i will kill myself i i am a leo i need the attention i know you okay now i really want to kill myself Uh, (laughs) well be careful what you ask for speaking of your farts and shits at everywhere uh i'll eat I was late to our filming today because, mm-hmm. well, it's, you know, let's backtrack it. Yesterday, um, not Judge, but my other dog, Lola, was crop dusting me oh. the whole night. Okay. Like we were watching movies and when she gets up, it fucking stinks like hell. So today I went to lunch with my German friends who are here visiting. Guten Tag. Mm-hmm. And then I came home to get ready for this podcast. And when I walked into my house, it smelled like fucking hot dog shit. Hot, steaming dog shit. I was like, what the fuck is that? I look at my rug and there are two liquid puddles of what looks like melted chocolate. And Yum. you know, here's the thing. Mr. B sent me some chocolate and I was like, oh, fuck. Did one of the dogs get into the chocolates and it's just melted on my carpet now? No, no, no. It was liquid hot dog shit. Mm. Lola had diarrhea all over my rug. All right. I mean, I had to open up all the windows, turn on my air purifier. It was unsalvageable. I threw the rug out and that's the reason why I was late now. That also leads to, I texted Ovley a video, and I said, Ovley, I'm going to be late. Look at what I'm dealing with right now, and I showed her the liquid poop. And then Ovley responds to me. Um, what? I- so Ovley responds to me with, you know, no words of encouragement, no, no nothing, just a simple photo. Well, I feel like it's a pretty appropriate response. Because you shared a picture of chocolate with me, so I shared a picture of chocolate with you. Please also note that in this picture, Alvely clearly has makeup on from what I'm assuming was a shoot today. And now you don't. So you decided to ruin your makeup with chocolate all over your face. There's no way that you don't remember what that photo is from. Wait. That's from our calendar shoot, Gina. Oh, is this an old... You know what, Alvely, here's the thing. (laughs) I would not believe, I mean, I wouldn't just automatically think that's from the calendar because I feel like this is something that you would just do on the fly, Ovaly. She is committed. Yeah. I do, I do commit to the bit. I will say that, but putting on makeup and then taking off makeup, that's not something that oh, I'm I would just, to do. Oh, I just assumed because you were already- Oh, you thought that I came from a shoot? You thought yeah. that I was working? Yeah. Thought that I was working on set? What's work like? You know, uh, in terms of on-camera talent work, it's fucking sparse right now, Gina. It's sparse. I wish I knew what that was like. I, I feel... I, I miss being on camera. Like, on a real fancy, expensive set. Not... That doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Work doesn't really exist anymore in the talent sphere. Um, unless you have a high social media following uh, that's active. Uh, as well as Twitch or YouTube views. Because right now, those are the only things that I'm seeing sponsorships and like marketing still go out for. But I mean, listen, Crown shut down. Uh, Riot, I think, was scaling back on some stuff. Blizzard was scaling back on some stuff. All of the other publishers scaling back. Twitch cut off all of their um, additional arms. That was like Twitch Rivals, Twitch Community, oh, wow. Twitch stuff. Yeah. I think Twitch Rivals still exists, but it used to be like a team of like 20 people. And now I think there's like five. Don't quote me on those numbers. Um, but yes, yeah, so there was just layoffs on creative of everything across the board. So right now, the name of the game is if it doesn't make money, we're not doing it. Yeah. So like, should I like fire up a resume or? Bitch. <laughs> I mean, what, so what do, what do you want to do? You just want to, because I'm, are you ready for this reality check? 
G4 is never going to happen again. G4 is never going to fucking happen again. We're we're doing the third reboot. There's the third reboot. I'll be so crush my dreams, Ovly. Ovly, it's going to come back. I know it will, Ovly. I know it will. It's it's like, it's been shot twice in the head. Oh, Ovly. So it can't even come back as a zombie because the brains are destroyed. I believe. I reached out to uh, a couple of buddies in uh, at Critical Role. I'm like, hey, you got any fun uh, or good uh, voice acting coaches? And they're like, oh, yeah, dude, here you go. So I'm probably going to do that. I'm going to kick back, kick start my fucking TikTok again. Good. For funsies. Good. And then I just realized I haven't posted on an Instagram photo or anything since January. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, because, no, nope, not going to touch on that since January. Comment below what you think Gina comment. should post on Instagram. Oh, I we're, thought it was... We're open for content ideas. Comment comment below on what you think the reason Gina hasn't been able to post since Instagram was. Because I don't know what it is and now I'm going to wildly speculate. Oh, it's not because I can't. Gina's arrest record. They found that? Gina secretly had a child. I was not on that island. Stephen Hawking was, though. Yeah, like... Knowing that Stephen Hawking's Haw- Hawkins cheated on his wife, it's just like she could have prevented it. Fucking, I don't, just just don't, un- unplug him. Yeah, don't charge the fucking <laughs> wheelchair up or something. I mean, well, so here's the thing: I don't really want to talk to the wife about it. I want to talk to him about it. I want to talk to the woman. Yeah, about dude. It. Like, who's who's the mistress that yeah. went? I'm gonna get me some of that. Yeah. Well, and probably a lot of money came from it, too. Probably. Yeah. Was he rich? I'm sure he was. He right? invented gravity or something, right? <laughs> what did he do? Yeah, he's got the patent for I gravity. I know he's famous for being smart, but I don't know what part of being smart. Mm-hmm. Should have just unplugged his shit, bro. Or, like, unplug his voice thing. How are you going to flirt with bitches when you can't even talk, you know? <gasps> you know what I really wanted when I was in middle school? And I would daydream of this. I would daydream that I would get in like a really bad accident and I would lose the ability to speak. And then um, I went to Japan and then in Japan, someone found me. They're like, oh my God, you can't speak. It's okay. I have the perfect thing for you. And then they would install a Vocaloid vocal cords box in my in my throat or whatever. And then when I spoke, I'd be able to sound like a Vocaloid and then I would become a J-pop idol. And that was, that's what I spent, that's what I daydreamed about. Were Vocaloids a thing back then? Yeah. Oh. Except it was literally just, there was Kaito, Mako, Miku, uh, Len and Rin, and then I think Luca was also out at the time. And then there was like, what's her name? Is it Tetsu? What's the name of the pink one? Watashi wa soja no. That one. Huh. Tets- Tetsu? I didn't know Vocaloids were around for that long. They've been around for freaking ever. I remember downloading a totally legal copy and version of the Miku Vocaloid. And I remember just like drawing it up and down and like making songs and stuff. None of them were good, mm-hmm. but I-, I played around with that and MMD. I- Do you think I would be a good VTuber? I think you could be. I think you could be a great VTuber. Are you good at screaming though? All the time. Okay. I feel like one of the things about VTubers is that as long as you're loud and annoying, at least to start, that's how you build your brand. You Mm -hmm. get a good couple clips out and then you could turn it into just kind of like thirst. Oh. So if you make a VTuber avatar with just like absolute big boobies, huge ass, and then you're just super loud, I think you'd be fine with it. All right. I need to raise like $4,000. For a VTube model. You could get like one probably for two to four K, but like the good ones are closer. I've been told the good ones are closer to like six and eight. I want good jiggle physics. Good jiggle physics. Mm-hmm. You should probably talk to Code Miko about that. Gosh, she's so good. She's so smart. She's so... She, have I told you about the story about Miko, uh, Miko when I met her? I don't think so. Well, after meeting her for the first time, I realized that I adore this woman i admire her but also i'm a little bit concerned for her but also kind of scared of her Mm -hmm. because one when i first met her it was with my sister we did a stream together and then we went to go eat afterwards seeing her work is fantastic she's a 
brilliant brilliant person mm-hmm. i mean like everything that she puts together all her modeling everything is great so mad respect for her obviously very talented but then we went out to go eat and we were walking out to my car and she looks down and she goes oh i have two different pairs of heels on and i was like oh she's probably gonna go inside and change it and she goes oh well and just continues on her fucking day and just goes eat and i was like what the fuck you just and then a part of me is just like, what a fucking little weirdo who lives their life like this. And it was kind of scary, but also very like, huh, respect. Ah, I respect It's her. like a, the crazy genius trope, you know? It is. That's her. Why think about shoes when you're thinking about the Meekovers? Yeah. She's brilliant. And I, th- I think she's so, she's pretty much mastered the art of audience interaction, you know? I want her to make a, 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 a VTube model for me. You should ask her. She's currently making her whole Mikoverse right now within yeah. Unreal Engine, and I think she's dropping beta for it within the next few weeks or upcoming months. Yeah. So you should you should hit her up about it. I was there when I first met her. I was there for the phone call she had about that, and I was like, oh my god! So this was like years ago. When she was talking about it. I was like, holy shit! This bitch is about to make something huge. Yeah, yeah. She's been working on it for a while, and I I don't know if she has like a huge team mm-hmm. with her that helps her, or if it's just her leading the helm. But mm-hmm. yeah, she deserves all the success that she mm-hmm. has. Mm-hmm. Um, did you see on TikTok, I think that this was confirmed as a rumor. I don't think this is real, but did you see on TikTok, uh, a fake news posting going around saying that the director of the Netflix avatar, the last airbender live action, uh, is going to recast the actor who plays Azula because she refused to lose weight. Oh yeah. I did see that. And then something that said that the only reason why she was hired was because because someone someone was like her like it was a nepo kind of thing or See, something. yeah someone said like nepo i think that's a fake news article oh, because okay. i've googled it and i can't find any um i can't find any trace of that mm-hmm. whatsoever or any source of that whatsoever so i think it was just tiktok fake news bait but i think what's interesting is that people treated it as if it was real and people were commenting on it as if it was real and it makes me feel really bad for this poor actress yeah because I'm uh, listen cards on the table she's she's not a good Azula Mm. she is not a good fit for Azula Mm -hmm. because one Azula is supposed to be fucking menacing Mm -hmm. she's supposed to look mean she's supposed to look like she could like read you uh and then fucking destroy your entire self-esteem with like a Mm one-liner that's what Azula looks like Mm -hmm. that's what Azula should feel like and when you look at this actress you don't you don't see or feel any of that but that being said that's not the actress's fault. She's cute. I've seen that's the, the di- It's the director casting. of the casting. Yeah. It's whoever did that. Because all you're doing is you're setting someone up to fail. Yeah. So they did the same thing with, um, I think the, what's her name? Not Suki. Uh, whatever the name of the moon girl is in Avatar. Mm-hmm. Her uh, casting was also a little weird. But also I think maybe it was just whoever did the wig did not lay that wig properly. I have always wanted to learn how to wig you know you could wig give yourself a pixie cut and then just wig every day i have all like i have always wanted to learn but the last the first and last time i ever worn a wig that was properly laid onto my head was through um demonstrating some core strength there that was someone's fetish mm-hmm. i farted a little oh, <laughs> i can never escape i can never fucking escape. so it's two people's fetishes <laughs> so uh stella chu made a cosplay for me my ducky cosplay yeah, and yeah, yeah. She, we did a photo shoot and she put a wig on me and she glued that wig on with proper hair glue and everything mm-hmm. cool looked great that shit was not going anywhere dude mm-hmm. oh i could have gone through a fucking tornado and that would have <laughs> stayed Here's the problem. Nobody ever taught Gina how to remove a wig, a wig glue. Okay. Uh, three days. I stayed in my house three fucking days and I tried everything. I looked it up. I tried mineral oil. I tried alcohol. I tried yanking on it. My edges were never the same ever again. And then I got so fucking desperate. I called like a black hair salon because who's going to fucking know how to remove a wig better than a bunch of black women. I called them up and I was almost tearfully just like, ma'am. I need your help. And I explained, I just need to get this wig off and I don't know how. It's been days. My edges are gone. There was a moment of pause 
and she just starts laughing so Aww. hard. I'm like, and I was like, I'll pay you. She's like, no, honey, just take mineral oil. It's fine. Just just soak it. I'm like, it's not working. I'm so scared right now. She's like, just uh, trust me. She's like, I'm not going to have you pay me to remove your wig. I'm not going to take your money. But just take mineral oil. I'm like, yeah, does vegetable oil work? I don't know what mineral oil is. I need to learn how to do wigs. But they are also very terrifying. I mean... And it's yeah. a whole fucking process. There's like, there's different kinds of wigs. And then like, God forbid I do this wrong and I get fucking dragged on the internet for my fucking wig lifting or something like that, you know, yeah. or like not laying it right. Or like do you your have lace to- front is showing. Yeah. My yeah. laces are showing. And then the, like, it's a whole process of like, you have to braid your hair first. So it's nice and tight. And then you have to cut the fucking thing. And then you have to pluck it to make it natural. I don't know. And then you match the wig cap with foundation or something to your scalp or some shit or another. This is crazy. Have you have you seen that video of the girl who's doing some podcast and she's sitting on this like blue couch and then the wig just slowly <laughs> falls off? She goes, oh my God. <laughs> That's one of my favorite videos of all yes. freaking time. But what you should just do is you should just do what the Koreans do, which is get the baseball cap with the hair sewn in. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the thing. My face doesn't suit well with a baseball cap. Have you what? noticed I never wear hats? No. Yeah, never wear hats and I never wear like regular t-shirts. Are you wearing sunglasses? I forgot about those. <laughs> it's been a very long day. I just spent the last hour cleaning dog shit off my rug and throwing my rug out. Okay, but wait, here's my question. You drove here. Yeah. At eight o'clock at night. Yeah. Were you wearing those while you were driving? Yes. You not do. on just on the top of her. Oh, head. just on the top of yeah, 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 Okay, because yeah. I was about to say you're not helping the Asian driving <laughs> stereotype at all, at all. Ian, yeah. can you teach me how to lay a wig? I don't. I don't want to be racist <laughs> or anything, but I'm just. I'm not. I'm not the wig expert. Sorry. Oh, you would think. Oh, you would, you would think that. You think Ian's walking around with wigs? <laughs> no, but I see. Like, for, I feel for like when I'm dressing in drag. Yeah, I course. feel like he's been around. Oh my god, go to drag queens! I'll introduce you to bitch pudding. Oh, yeah, oh, I was yeah, gonna yeah. say or there's a, there's another demo that knows wigs. That's true. Well, there's, yeah. they're not in the room with us unless. No, okay. are the drag queens <laughs> in the room with us? I don't, I don't know how. He's like wig s- adjacent. Six three two forty five is not a very attractive <laughs> drag queen. <laughs> I figured. I feel like there'd be an audience for that. When I went to bitch pudding's drag show. For the first time, I was taken aback. Oh. Um, it's held at the precinct in LA. It's a very popular gay bar, and they do a lot of drag shows there. I walk in. I'm there with producer Ian and then producer Vanessa. Yeah. Uh, and we walk into, like, the main dance floor area, and there's kind of, like, these big pedestals. Just, like, they're basically just box risers for people to stand and dance on. Oh, God. I crushed my vagina on one of those ones. <laughs> huh? Did you just fall over and slam the pussy down it was a year of the hit song Gangnam style by Psy. i was dancing at a club in la and the platform i was a go-go dancer back then and the platform that i was on was a uh, small uh, a bit smaller than the platforms i'm usually used to and Gangnam style comes on and um of course you have to do the dance and then mid dance i slipped off the box however one foot went down on the ground the other foot stayed on the box so I essentially scissored the the corner of the box um, right on my labia majora. So it was a little bit off center. And uh, the bruise that came from that, Ovaly. Did you take a picture? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You... Wait, is this a picture oh, no. of your vagina? Uh, somewhat. <laughs> Am I going to see your vagina again? No, no, no. no. It's, it's, it's covered enough. Again. Again. Um, this was I probably saw her vagina very early on in our friendship. Not the inside. This was taken um but the outside. Imagine me legs up in the air and holding the camera down there. Stirrups. My panties are right there. That's the bruise that I got. Oh my god. Can we show that? Nikki, is that Nikki, put a label right here that says armpit, please. Yeah. Just right armpit. It's very believable as an armpit, actually. Yeah. yeah. Our, this is an armpit yeah um but yeah so that's that where my bikini area is and i feel like i lost my virginity for the second time that day bro and i had to play it off i couldn't just 
curl up and cry, I got back on that fucking box and I kept on dancing. Oh my God. Yeah. That was the worst bruise I've ever gotten in my life. And for like four days, I couldn't sit with weight on that side. Do you sit with your pussy? I mean, like pressure pushes up on it. You know? How do you feel when Gangnam Style is played now? (laughs) It's like a fucking... (laughs) It's like it, it, it pulsates down there out of flashbacks, now, you know, like just like a, a, a ghost, a phantom pain down there now. Oh, mm-hmm. that's a lot. Mm-hmm. I will say that's definitely a lot. And I'm so sorry. I was just going to tell you about how there were two very large gay men wearing G strings and dancing. Go, I got to go to a go, bitch go dancing show. themselves. You do. Yeah. You, you have to come with us. Yeah. It's fucking amazing. I've never been to like a whole like proper drag show before. Yeah, it was a, so bad. It was Mortal Kombat themed, right? Oh yeah, that night was Mortal Kombat it, themed. It was pretty sick. Uh this month for March, she just had her Sailor Moon night. What the fuck? She's a Moony also? Oh my god. She just had her Sailor Moon night. I love her. I don't know what the theme is for April, but I can ask her and mm. we could go if you'd like. I saw the April Fool's League skins and they're so cute. Oh my god, Choo Choo Train Orn. Oh my god. So cute. Oh, there's a police chase going on outside my house. Ooh. They found me. I stole a bunch of porno mags. Mangas. Mangas, not mags. I still have a Playboy magazine in my chest why because okay so hear me out hear me wait, out. wait 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 like an actual playboy an actual chest an like actual... who has a chest because like, i ran out of pirate? shelves i ran out of shelves where else was i supposed to put my booty <laughs> there's like safes there's like shelves there's boxes maybe a shoe box who the fuck has a chest i don't know i'm just not good at organizing things <laughs> actually i have a hex tech chest that has all my diaries in it in my living room you have diaries i have a lot of pain yeah who the hell still has a diary see this is what happens you get into writing diaries and journals when you're a kid your parents find it when you come home from school they open it up and they read it in front of you and embarrass you and tell you what the fuck are you writing and they show your family until you start crying and then from that point on you never want to write ever again because you lost trust and you lost interest in writing journals and then you move out at 14 years old and tell them to go fuck themselves and now you live in la looking for jobs See, I didn't have that issue because I had the unicorn secret password journal. So you had to type in my special combinations. Which was one, two, three, four. Are you sure it wasn't boobs? No, that requires five letters. Oh, okay. Um, So Gina, basically all of that could have been avoided if you were just a little smarter about your privacy. That's true. (laughs) Password protections, man. Anyway, your physical Playboy magazine? Oh, yeah, my physical Playboy. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's like a blonde lady on the cover or something and there's like a pool behind her but i didn't care about that what i cared about was like on page 35 or something they had this full like two page display of cloud nine okay so we're talking high we're talking balls we're talking medios sneaky lemon nation the og cloud nine former quantic gaming roster okay coming into the lcs balls blazing literally because that was the name of their top laner playboy in playboy and they're all kind of like posing they're in front of like these blue lockers i think like high is doing like a bicep curl or something medios has like a sweatband on that you, you gotta understand, Gina. There was a long time where people, venture capitalists mostly, were trying to make esports seem cool. Mm. I have never they seen tried. a very super attractive esports player, pro player, in any like. I need to look. I feel like I need to. I haven't seen any attractive like players where I'm like, oh wow, that guy. What really? Faker so, fucks. Okay. Faker <laughs> fucks simply because faker it's fucks. faker. Faker I, can fuck whoever he wants. That's not true at all. <laughs> in Korea, not even, he not in even, Korea. not even in Korea, bro. What do you in mean? Korea, he can't. If he went up to any of the members nope. of like Red Velvet, they'd be like, "Oh my god." <laughs> I'm okay, so this is down. a fundamental un- misunderstanding of how men and women work. <laughs> That's not true. I feel like so- if, if someone- I was a part of Red Velvet, I'd fuck. Yes, if you were somehow transformed in a completely different body in any K-pop girl group, you would be Are like, you saying that I'm not pretty enough to be a K-pop star." Look straight into the camera. Ovly, none of us are pretty Comment enough. below if you think Ovly <laughs> should be a K-pop Listen, star. Listen, let's be honest here. None of us are pretty enough to be in a K-pop group. 
I could be the diversity one. Though. Yeah, that'd be great. The quirky one. The, quirky, the funny <laughs> the one. Ugly the one. ugly one. We are all like the funny one in the group. If we were to, to try to be in a K-pop group, Avli, let's be fair here. Oh, she's the one that has personality. Yeah. But now the hot ones are also, they also have personality. It's like they put a little chip into their brain. <sighs> I think they just do surgery to their faces. I'm planning on going to Korea and get some plastic surgery done. Maybe this year. You literally just told me that you want to remove the plastic surgery. Oh, I want to remove the titties. But bitch, I'm about to go to Korea and come back as BTS. I, I am BTS. <laughs> a man? Fucking uh, all of them. Get, I will get be that a, bowl I will, cut. Yeah, I will be BTS and Blackpink put together. Fuck it. There's nothing going on here. And plus, Korea is cheap as fuck right Korea now. Korea is very cheap. Yeah. And my best friend's a nurse. Okay. Might as well go. And they have like an influencer thing where they're like, yeah, we'll, we'll do like up to 50,000 USD, $50,000, you know, worth of surgery for you. Just post a YouTube video. I will be BTS. Holy shit. I will come back here looking like that girl that does interviews for Escaping North Korea. What? You haven't seen her? No. Tits out. <laughs> I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about there. What the fuck? Like she she, she was on the podcast circuit for a while. Yeah. Oh. Uh, North Korean woman podcast. There you go. What the hell is her name? Y- usually, oh, Yunmi usually Park? a very specific wardrobe. Yeah. Boobies? Yeah. Have you noticed that Brazilian weather report ladies always have like a bomb ass? That's what you want to look like? Well, I mean like that and a little bit of BTS, you know. Okay. Whatever. Um, but yeah, she she left North Korea and got every surgery under the sun. Are those her nipples sticking out? A lot of times, yeah. A lot of times, yeah. Okay. She does a lot of uh, a lot of uh, podcasts and stuff, and yeah, yeah. Let me see. Interesting. Very very interesting. Oh, what are you zooming in on now? Boobies. Oh, boobies. Yeah. I mean, listen, go to Korea, get your facials and surgery on, and then come back and collect hundreds of thousands of Instagram followers. Mm-hmm. It just works like mm-hmm. that sometimes. Mm-hmm. Okay, you said you were hanging out with other people before you came here? Yeah, I went to lunch today with my German friends. Um, she uh, And I learned a lot of things about German people. Like me? Better things about German people. <laughs> so... Well, so we we got to we got to talking about like the cultural differences of like Americans and Germans. So apparently, whenever so whenever she visits, she loves going to Target. You know, like mm-hmm. Target's super fun for them; they love it because there is no Target in Germany. Because Target actually apparently tried to open one up in Germany, mm-hmm. but it didn't work out because Americans are too friendly. They didn't like the American customer service of "Hi, how are you? Is there anything I can help you with today?" Okay, are you sure? All right. They do not like that. Germans like yeah. you to just leave them the fuck alone. Or like just, like you can tell who an American is simply by the fact that they just look at you and just smile at you. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's what we do. Or uh, and then I was like, so what's like weird stuff here that in America that, that kind of weirds you? She's like, you guys have fucking American flags everywhere. You have flags everywhere. And they're like, <laughs> they were like, yeah, we don't do that because we the last time we had like German pride, it didn't go well. It didn't go well. I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, that's right huh and then she's like the only time they have like german pride and they like hang their flags is when there's like an international like oktoberfest (laughs) world cup yeah the world cup the olympics and stuff then people are hanging flags outside of their house like german flags but even when they do that it's probably like the first guy in his neighborhood that comes out with a flag like do i should i can i are we allowed to do this now Uh, you know yeah so and they're like, yeah, you guys have a lot of fucking flags out here for like no reason. Um, also, and then I asked them, I was like, what is, because they're, uh, they're, they're flight attendants, you know? I'm like, what is the, the travel warning when it comes to like America now? And she's like, oh yeah, you guys are deemed like high risk now. And I'm like, are you serious? Yep. As I sit here in sunny Pasadena outside eating a bowl of pasta? Like, yeah, you guys are known as high risk now. The same, like you guys are pretty much on the same level as like, brazil or like saudi arabia and shit i was like oh fuck we're fucking ghetto you know i don't know if it's as much as that it's not but to other people like outside they consider us like a high risk country now because everyone has a fucking gun i'm like yeah we, we do yeah mm-hmm. um and then so i was talking to my german friend she's like you know and the nazis would have really gotten away with it 
or been able to cover it up so much but in true nazi form they recorded everything they wrote down everything in full detail and that's how we know how terrible the atrocities were i was like oh she's like and then i think she said something like the russians were, or something at the time were killed a fuck ton of people also but they didn't really record it well maybe the people who were supposed to be recording stuff just fell out of a building and just tripped like that boeing guy who killed himself the whistleblower i'm going on a plane tomorrow and i'm not excited about it better hope it's not a boeing max i think it is Oof. i think it is let me check wait where's my see and then she says like the reason why you know we know all these things because germans kept track of everything and people still want to tell me that being disorganized unorganized is a bad thing okay if i was running the regime <laughs> Don't, don't take Gina. notes on your crime, that's for sure. If I was running the regime, there would be no records because I simply would have forgotten. Gina. All right? You crazy. What was I supposed to do today? <laughs> Probably wasn't important. Okay. What is the what is the type of plane that I am in? It is a... Okay. It's a 757. Oh. 200. I think you should be okay. Where is my plane coming from? Let me see. It is coming from... It says, please wait. Okay, it says Fort Myers to Newark and then Newark to Los Angeles. Oh, you're looking at the 737 MAX 8 that you don't want. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I'll survive. Mm -hmm. I will say the last time that I had a plane ride to PAX, I was squooshed. I was squooshed. I was so smooshed. I think I was in the middle seat and I had these two big guys and they sat right next to me and I was smooshed. And I was like, and I don't want to encroach on their personal space. So I just had like my little arms here. No, everyone should know the fucking rule. Okay. Window seat gets to lean on the window. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Aisle seat gets the foot rest or, you know, all the leg leg space. So middle seat always gets both arm rests. That's a fucking unspoken rule that everyone should know. That everyone should know. Give the middle person both armrests because they have nothing for them. So when people don't do that, I get so angry. Also, fuck all you people who are like, you shouldn't recline. Oh, fuck you. I paid for this seat. I'm going to fucking recline. Also, like, they're like, oh, you shouldn't recline because, like, the, the our tray pushes into us. No, it doesn't. It counters... Like yeah. it makes, it compensates for the fucking recline. Yeah. I hate people who say that. Yeah, no. People are awful. Yeah. Um fuck what was i about to say i had something really good and then i totally forgot it and now i'm sad wait how sad are you you were talking about the last time you flew to pax oh last time i flew to pax and then it went into planes and then i totally i lost it would you say you're just a little bit sad or like a higher level of sad We're going to get canceled and it's going to be because of you. I'm going to put your face on this. I didn't do anything. The thumbnail of this episode is going to be your face in a swastika. (laughs) Did you know? Question mark. (laughs) Episode nine. Gina supports what? (laughs) I'm just like, Nikki, go ahead and digitally edit me out from this entire episode. If you could. Thank you so much. I told my German friend today. I was like, I went to the Holocaust Museum a few months ago and I almost texted her like, you fucking son of a bitch how could you <laughs> oh there's another story i wanted to tell you okay so um i was very like i said my life has been very quiet lately mm-hmm. so i want to hear other people's dramas you know so i posted on my instagram a, a question boxing like hey tell me about whatever drama you got going on in your life right now i need some i need some tea mm-hmm. my friend posts went on a grinder date with this guy um and, you know, went back to his place to, like, have some drinks, but realized he was kind of weird, even though the place was kind of nice, but he was really weird. Mm-hmm. Then found him on the news a few weeks later. And then he texted me the news article. My, the suspense is killing me. I'm interested. Something's happening. This is in Australia. Um, man posed as doctor roamed hospital for months to find a boyfriend. Oh, I saw that. A man who pretended to be a doctor in order to try and find a boyfriend was allowed access to Queensland hospitals for six months after tricking staff members. Brett Delaney, 25, had regular visits uh, and refers to himself as Dr. Nick Delaney. He was caught when a staff member noticed he mispronounced basic medical terms. I feel like if you're going to pull this off, read up on some fucking things, bro. You've got to at least watch Grey's Anatomy yeah. like three or four times because I can tell you like, yeah, it looks like we're going to have to do that laparoscopically. Yeah. 
He's having an issue with his pulmonary artery. Mm-hmm. He's going to... Uh, uh, code blue, get the crash cart. Mm-hmm. Clear. Yep. <laughs> so I messaged him. I was like, wait, what? He, um, let me see. And, he, and, he, and then I was like, what was he like? He, and then my friend goes, he was weird and gross, but like a doctor. So I thought, hey, this could be fun for a bit. Was meant to go over to his house again because he was persistent on cooking me a nice dinner. But then my friend made me Google him. Dude, Googling someone is the worst. Oh, my God. Someone in our Discord, and I have nothing but love for you, name their new baby after me. What? There's Where? a little baby ovule? There are two baby ovules. Where the fuck did I do? Two baby ovules? There are two ovulies? baby ovules. I ran into one uh, wife at... Oh my god, where was it? Was it Detroit? I think it was Detroit LCS Finals. Um, and I ran into a wonderful mother there. I, I think her husband was a big LCS fan. And I found out that there exists a two-year-old Ovalie. And then now, as of the last few weeks, there is yet another baby Ovalie. Where am I seeing the So, all Oh, maybe it's in my personal Discord and not the bonus oh, okay. Discord. But yeah, so there's a baby Ovalie. There's two baby Ovalies running around. Well, I guess one's crawling around. One's not... Well, no, I guess they don't crawl yet. Okay, one's one's pooping. Two's pooping. I'm all pooping three too. of you are pooping. Yep. We're all pooping. Yeah. It's great to poop. Oh, more ovulies. Can you imagine? What if we just make an army? Where did that name come from? I don't know. It's such a unique name. My mom named me after one of my grandma's f- teaching friends. So she's Big Ovily and I was Little Ovily. I'm going to Google Ovily. I like Big Ovily. My mom was always like weird on shit. She's like... Big Ovily never had kids, so she's sad. And I'm like, I don't think that's the case, Mom. And also, not having kids is the fucking way to go. Your name is so unique that literally when you type in your name, you're the first r- result. Or... All results, really. Or, I'm just that bitch. You are that bitch. Right? You truly are that bitch. I am just that bitch. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I am going to PAX tomorrow, Gina. That's why I'm getting on a plane. I'm going to PAX East. It'll be the first time I'm at PAX East since G4. Shout out. Pour one out. Rip to the homies. You went to PAX East. You guys did the Attack of the Show panel, right? Mm -hmm. That was cute. I was Mm -hmm. not invited. Um, I did the little IRL backpack thing for a little bit. And then they cut that stream short so we could go to a three-hour starting soon screen for the Austin Show. Uh, Price is right. Super fun. Love that. I love Austin Show, though. He's fucking fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, And then... So I'm going to be talking with a bunch of different developers, uh, mainly for OTK Games Expo. I'm excited to try out a bunch of new games. And I'm also excited to just kind of like vibe with a group and with a community that I've never really interacted with Mm -hmm. before. Yeah, that's true. I saw a post recently of the highest viewed OTK streamer, and I'm so happy to see Asfend at the top. That doesn't seem accurate. I think it's still Asmongold. But I love, really? but I fucking love S. I swear I saw. Hold on. Well, I'm, I'm only bringing that up because I was literally just doing, um, what is it? I was doing uh, data analytics or data collection today. Mm-hmm. And I think that his, um, Asmongold's numbers still top out over S. Fan. Oh, I didn't even realize that he was part of it. I know no one. Um, <sighs> but Asmin streams on his alt Twitch channel, which is Zacharar. So oh. that averages about like I think like 16k concurrence. Okay. And then S band is I think at about like 10 to Most 12, which is not a fucking small number. Yeah. February. S band and then Asmund. Hmm. Has Asmund not it been It might have been more hours total rather than Oh, concurrence. yeah, yeah. Is it? Uh... Yeah, because S band gets on there and he streams, let's see, does it say hours streamed? Okay, so for comparison, S band has streamed 400 hours. Jesus grinding 400 hours Just and then work asmin streamed 165 hours jesus as fan my god so, working yeah, yeah yeah so just just for reference oh but yes yeah, so yeah there technically yes that would be the most watched yeah if you want to go by that analytic yeah. but dude i freaking love the otk fam oh good they've been so chill good so i'm glad you found a new home yeah i'm vibing mm-hmm. but Oh, hey, uh, how was drinking night last Sunday? Oh, drinking night? Mm-hmm. Okay, drinking night where you bailed? I had my son's first birthday. I thought you said it got cleared out by the church. <sighs> That's what you usually fucking do, goddamn colonizers. Mm-hmm. 
freaking colonizers. Uh, no, it was just me and Raz and uh, producer Ian went out with um, another one of my production buddies and we just chilled. It was just a vibe. Oh, good. We just grabbed Din Din, ate up, and then um, went home. Oh, no karaoke? Nothing crazy. No karaoke because Raz wanted to go to bed at 1030. Raz, what the fuck? Are you 90? Kind of. Razzy. Kind of. Jesus. But it's okay. We still love Raz. But that being said, I do need to like get a good night's sleep uh, tonight just in case there's any crazy PAX parties. Hit a bitch up. What time are you flying out? Eight. All right. We're going to go to bed. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Always got to go to bed. I got to go home and manage my supermarket. I'm a business owner now. She's a business owner. If you find me at PAX, come find me. Yeah. Oh, wait. No, if you are at PAX, come find me. Yeah. Bye. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and also subscribe to our Patreon because I may or may not show butthole on there. Okay. Bye. Bye.